Thanks for watching this video about how to get started with Seamless AppSec in one day. We're going to share five key things you can do today to build a mature AppSec program. I'm Harley Adams, and I'll be presenting today with Brent Jenkins. We are both with Fortify, a longtime leader in the application security space. Fortify has been part of MicroFocus software for about two years since spinning out from HPE. Today, we'll emphasize more people and process and not just push a product solution. We have a couple disclaimers. First, building an AppSec program is a long process and can be measured in years, and it varies by organization, so we're simplifying the story. We'll start with the scary breach slide. This great visualization by Information is Beautiful shows the frequency and scale of major breaches around the world. Basically, there's a major breach every week. These threats are scary, but we know that organizations are motivated by actual breaches and audit and compliance requirements. Securing organizations requires a holistic approach. A CISO will have some variation of these three themes shown here when it comes to security objectives. First, manage identities. The key is knowing who has access to what and how privileges are managed. Next, protect data. Data is at the heart of it all. We're still seeing a dramatic rise in data volumes. Then secure applications. Mobile and web application releases are increasing in frequency and invite more risk to the business through vulnerabilities. A holistic approach is necessary since traditional security methods fail to defend against attacks targeting applications. Application layer attacks can be perceived as normal traffic and pass through network, perimeter, data, and endpoint security systems. Typically, an organization tries to catch the attack rather than prevent it to begin with. Fortify's software security research team finds that a vast majority of applications, 79% of web and 89% of mobile, have at least one critical or high severity issue. A critical issue is one that has high impact and a high likelihood of occurring. It's easy to discover and to exploit. An example would be SQL injection. The prevalence of issues is in part due to the tension between business goals and security goals. A primary business goal is to generate revenue with product and feature releases. You can't slow innovation down and still be competitive. A fundamental principle of application security is, therefore, build security into your way of thinking and operating without restricting agility and innovation. Building security into your way of thinking and operating means your development approach doesn't matter, whether it's waterfall, agile, DevOps, Security must fit into your development life cycle. Security fits into the software development life cycle in several ways. Here is a simplified view of the various AppSec components. I'll touch on them quickly. Static and dynamic are the core methods. Static or SAST is not just about finding security bugs, but can also help developers produce more secure code. It shows you exactly where to find an issue in the code with line of code detail. It has language-specific remediation strategies. Dynamic, or DAST, is about catching exploitable vulnerabilities before they get into production. It simulates attacks on a running web application or service to identify exploitable vulnerabilities and doesn't require code. In the end, they both complement each other as part of a complete AppSec program. Software composition analysis for open source and third-party software is also fundamental to every AppSec program. Then interactive, IAST, and runtime protection, RASP, are useful in certain situations. IAST is based on agent technology that allows you to analyze running applications. RASP can be used to protect applications that may not be actively developed. The right approach is making application security seamless throughout the development process for the entire organization. It all starts with code creation, then continues with the build, testing, and release steps. Security issues are found and fixed at every stage of the process, just like functional issues. Figuring out how to integrate security into the development lifecycle and tool chain while minimizing developer processes is key. The idea of shifting left means testing is performed earlier in the lifecycle, where it is faster and cheaper to find and fix security issues. 
the end state of DevSecOps with continuous application security testing is one where vulnerabilities are either discovered prior to production deployment or more rapidly remediated. We've briefly touched on the components of an AppSec program. We've said that a mature program can take years to build, and so we're going to focus on a few concrete things that we can focus on today. The first is maturity model. Become familiar with a security maturity model. The OWASP SAM, or Software Assurance Maturity Model, was defined with flexibility in mind such that it can be utilized by small, medium, or large organizations using any style of development. BSIM, the Building Security and Maturity Model, is another good maturity model to reference. A maturity model accelerates your learning curve. You can iterate while working toward long-term goals. You can create plans tailored to your, your own organization. And it provides a framework to communicate to non-security people. It's simple, well-defined, and measurable. Now, Brent is going to go a little deeper into some other phase one activities. All right. Thanks, Harley. So moving on to the key initiative number two, I want to talk about security champions. But let's take a step back a little bit and define exactly what a security champion is. According to OWASP, a security champion is an active member of a team that may help to make decisions about when to engage the security. Okay, so then why are security champions important for your organization? Well, they can actually help in quite a lot of ways. But a few of some of the most important reasons are they help scale security through multiple teams. Because these champions are comprised of people outside of the security team, they help engage those non-security folks. And most importantly of all, they help establish a culture of security within your organization. Because when you have non-security people considering and knowing the importance of security throughout the entire SDLC, it keeps it top of mind for everyone. So how do you find and identify security champions within your organization? Well, OWASP has a very easy to follow and fairly detailed playbook for this. The biggest point I want to make here is with the OWASP Security Champion Playbook, it's that it was created to suit any company size and probably more importantly, any maturity level. This playbook details step by step each action that you need to take. But I just want to summarize a couple of these. So you have your identifying teams, then you have defining the roles. Just the main objective here is to just have tangible goals and clear role descriptions for your security champions. Then there's nominating your champions. In order for this to pass smoothly, you're going to want to get approval from management. And just a little tip here to get that done, make a presentation about what those defined roles of a security champion are, the benefits of not only the security team, but the other teams involved is, and the approximate time a champion would expect to spend on security related tasks. That just makes it easier to pass through that approval of management to get those security champions. After that, you're gonna to wanna to set up communication channels. So whether it be private Slack channels, group Skype chats, mailing lists, etc., And then build a solid knowledge base. So the main idea here is to just have a place that's the primary source of answers for security related questions. And then probably the most important is maintain their interest. You don't want to go through all this trouble of identifying, defining, and finding your security champion, setting up the communications, and then losing their interest because you're not keeping them engaged. So having regular workshops or training sessions that explain this, your strategies, promoting best practices, or even just sharing some recent news from the security world. You can send out regular newsletters to your champions, and then Another really great idea is to get as many of your security champions to attend your local OWASP meetings because the OWASP meetings, they're just, they're fun, sociable ways to keep security top of mind. So number three, performing a security assessment. Once again, OWASP has plenty of resources to leverage here. So there's a lightweight version of their security assessment and a detailed assessment. So depending on the level of detail you're looking to achieve, or maybe even the amount of resources you have to utilize, you can pick from that. 
The assessment's broken out into four different main categories, which each have three subcategories. You're going to need to answer numerous questions within each one of these categories. Things like, do project stakeholders know their project's compliance status? Is penetration testing performed on high-risk projects prior to release? And so on. A few things to consider, however, before you want to start an assessment for your organization is whether you're going to be performing it internally or via a third-party vendor. Obviously, there's a decent or a lot of resources, time, and effort involved in performing it internally, but that generally is how most organizations do approach it. Now, with any type of assessment, there's some steps that are helpful to take to prepare for it. I'm not going to break down each one of these today, especially since OWASP gives you such a detailed guide for this, but I will touch on just a few of them. So creating a core assessment team. You know, you just want to have as many people involved as you can, IT managers, heads of different teams or function areas that you're going to be interacting with. Then reviewing existing security policies. And if you don't have an existing security policy, now's the time to create one. Create a database of your IT assets. Understand the threats and vulnerabilities to your organization. So just it's about preparing a list of all potential threats that your business could face based on whether it be past experience, experiences of your peers, news reports, etc. And then estimating the impact of those threats and vulnerabilities, determining the likelihood of them, and then plan the controls. So you've performed your assessment but what results should you get out of it? Well, if you followed the OWASP assessment spreadsheet correctly, it automatically creates for you a tailored roadmap that addresses your security needs. Due to the people involved in this project, you'll now have an organizational-wide understanding of how your pro program will grow. And finally, the spreadsheet will automatically create your security scorecard worksheets that show your current maturity and your forecast and maturity based off of your roadmap assessment questions you answered. So number four, you've done your security homework. It's time, it's time to start creating your plan. In order to do that, we need to define your initial scope. Just a few things to keep in mind when doing this is some of these things will greatly depend on organizational context what your realistic goals are, and what type of constraints you have, whether it be budget, timing, resources, etc. So obviously there's plenty more things you can consider when defining your initial scope, but we feel these are some of the most important ones to get you started. Things like what apps or development team are you going to start with, and that's even if you have a choice. Are you going to be utilizing SAST or DAST, and that's only if you can't utilize both because they're so complementary to each other. What integrations are crucial for your organization? What about SaaS versus on-prem? How are you going to enable your developers to start coding with security in mind? A big challenge. And finally, what does success for this initiative even look like? So like I just mentioned, when it comes to SaaS or DAST, it's important to, in order to have a mature and successful AppSec program to utilize both. Because when just doing static testing, you often get a lot of false positives, making it often difficult to prioritize. For dynamic, you can run into having low visibility as to where the vulnerability is in the code, and it can often take longer to remediate any findings. Again, striving for the goal of seamless application security, you want to use both. So there's a lot of software being utilized throughout the SDLC, but something you need to consider is what integrations within those will be crucial for your organization. I know we've mentioned before that tools should be the last thing to consider or think about, but it is important to know what tools the rest of your teams are using and what integrations they find mission critical before you require any tools. Because in order for your AppSec program to be seamless, you can't have any friction with the software that your other teams are using. So those integration points are crucial. Okay, so... One of the biggest challenges most organizations that we speak to have when it comes to having a successful AppSec program is the friction security causes against other teams, but especially when it comes to developers. 
So the question is, how can you enable developers to code with security in mind and do it without slowing down the speed and innovation they're striving for? Some of the solutions to this come in the form of software and features. There's things like real-time security spell checker software that's integrated directly into the developer's IDE, allowing them to see as they code any high confidence security vulnerabilities they're creating. So not only does this show them and it keeps from more vulnerabilities getting through in the end, it also slowly trains and teaches them because just like any spell checker, there's only so many times you can make the same mistake and see that red squiggly line before you actually start learning from your mistakes. So it's, it's a training tool as well. Along with that, there's software like Secure Code Warrior that offers role-specific gamified training for developers to learn about application security. Because it's not that developers don't want to create secure code, it's just most of them were never taught to. So it's going to be a learning process and we need to make it as easy and even as fun as possible. And then you can always make available to them secure coding best practices and that sort of thing. Finally, what is your organization's expected results? Now there's plenty of metrics and stats you could look at for things like this, and it's really organizational specific. But some of the common things to measure in the early stages are things like how many apps or how much of your app is covered by security. What's the improved time to resolve vulnerabilities found? That's an important one when it comes to becoming more and more mature in your security program. What's the number of automated tests and tooling created from the program? And then finally, how has your program improved, improved your security risk posture overall? So one thing an organization might consider doing is after 12 to 18 months or even two years, re-performing the assessment exercise from the OWASP SAM and then comparing their scorecard worksheet to see how much their maturity scores have changed over time. Okay, now it's time for tools. Number five, the final step. Since this is getting started in a day, we're not going to dive much into tools at all because in order to do application security correctly in the first place, there are many steps to address before you ever get to the tools. It's people, processes, then tools. That's why I really just want to say there really is no silver bullet. Organizations that continue to invest in point products or fix problems ad hoc they're not considering this long-term play strategy or end game. These silver bullets just continue to increase cost and complexity of their AppSec programs over time. So really the biggest point we can make here is align yourself with the framework, know your constraints, your scope and your goals, then find tools that meet those requirements. And when doing so, turn to the experts out there like Gartner, but you want to make sure you have an AppSec solution that is embedded and integrated seamlessly throughout the entire SDLC. So we've given you a lot of guidance and things to think about. And all of the references that we've mentioned so far in this video, things like the OWASP SAM, BSIM frameworks, the Security Champion Playbook, all of these things can, get, can actually get you started with an AppSec program in a day. And we'll link all of these references below in the video. But when it comes to getting started in a day, there's also starting with application security as a service. We here at Microfocus have Fortify on demand for this. And this covers your SAST, DAST, IAST, RASP. Yes, I know that's a lot of acronyms and more. Customers choose Fortify because of its ease of use, its deployment flexibility, and the quality and accuracy of our scan results. So if you want to get started in a day, you could go and download a free trial of FOD or feel free to contact us to get a, a demo of the product. So with that, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Again, all the references that we've discussed in this video will be linked below. Thank you again, Harley, for joining me. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a great day. <laughs>